Ladies and gentlemen, would love for you guys to turn with me to the book of Habakkuk, chapter two, verse one. And it reads as follows. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me, verse two, and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. This is verse three. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Verse four, behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to we're going to live by faith today. I'm going to take my place on the rampart on the watchtower and I am going to declare by God's grace and God's spirit what is coming and we're also going to give God praise for what has already come. This is Q1 prophetic release as we come to the close of the first quarter of 2024, I am excited to both rejoice in what God has done based on the words that have been spoken prophetically through this broadcast and other mediums that God has allowed me to speak through. And I'm honored that you would join me 
in prayer as we look forward to what God is doing. We're going to speak some things and pray about some things so that we can be in lockstep with God in his move in these last days and times. I want to welcome you all to Napalm Springs Podcast, Episode 7, Q1, Prophetic Release. Let's get lit, y'all. So I want to go to Deuteronomy chapter 18, and I want to start with verse 20, because I want to make a couple bold pronouncements as I get going. It says here, verse 18, or rather verse 20 of chapter 18, but the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know what the word which the Lord has spoken? This is very important. Verse 22, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that thing which the Lord has spoke has not spoken, the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not ducking smoke. Anybody who claims to be a prophet has to stand by his word. And that includes scriptures just like this, where the Lord has spoken very clearly. If someone speaks as a prophet in the name of the Lord and that thing does not come to pass, then you can say, hey, God did not send that prophet. God did not give that prophet that word. And if this is a thing that the prophet is continually doing, let me tell you something. You can easily say, this prophet is not from God. I can tune away from that channel. So it's important that I take times like this, and I thank God for allowing me to. At the end of what is the first quarter of 2024, I basically want to, first of all, highlight and give God glory for the words that have come to pass that he's used me to speak through this prophetic ministry. And then I want to do something else. I want to take my position on the rampart, on the watchtower, on my station where God has placed me to look out and see what is coming. And I want to forecast and declare. And I want to tell and predict what God is doing so that when it comes to pass, your heart can be full of reverence and awe for the God who performed it. And it also positions us to be as effective as we possibly can as part of, of God's kingdom militant force to bring the expansion of his reign and rule from heaven to earth for such a time as this. Go with me to one other scripture. Amos chapter three. I'm gonna start with verse five. And it says, will a bird fall into a snare on the earth where there is no trap for it? Will a snare spring up from the earth if it has caught nothing at all? Verse six. If a trumpet is blown in a city, will not the people be afraid? If there is calamity in a city, will not the Lord have done it? Verse 7, surely the Lord does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Verse 8, a lion, ha a lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? When God speaks, when he has given you the spirit of the prophet, the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot help but release and prophesy what God has said. And as I stand in this office by God's grace, when God speaks and shows me things, woe unto me if I do not declare what the Lord has spoken. So how can we put these principles together that we've gathered from these two scriptures, both uh, in Deuteronomy 18 and Amos chapter 3. Number one, accuracy is important in prophecy, period. 
Nobody can claim to be a prophet and just throwing out these crazy words and nothing's coming to pass. No one's lives are being changed. It's not piercing to the heart of the matter and bringing people deliverance, healing, salvation, and breakthrough in a supernatural way. The signs and marks of a prophet as are exemplified through scripture, Old Testament and New, they have to come to pass, period. The Lord will back up the reality of his word operating through his servants through signs and wonders. That's the bottom line. And accuracy is one of those things that we can look to as evidence of a prophet's authenticity and of a prophetic ministry's validity. So we're going to go through the fulfillments, some of the fulfillments that we have seen already in this first quarter of 2024, based on words that were spoken this year in 2023 and going all the way back to 2022. And we're going to give God glory for that. And the other thing that we can take away is that prophecy matters and is important in terms of God's kingdom expansion and the work of his spirit in this day and time. Amos said that God does nothing unless he first reveals it to his servants, the prophets. Now, we know in part, we prophesy in part. I get a piece, you get a piece. It will not all come through one ministry. In fact, all of us together make up the body of Christ. And together, we can produce the anointing, or I should say not produce the anointing, but with the anointing on us, we can produce the works of the risen Lord Jesus Christ as is needed to meet the needs of our world today and to usher in the reign, the eternal reign of the Messiah upon his second coming. That is something that we do together. But prophetic ministries operate as the eyes and as the mouth we see and we declare. And with that word comes the power to bring to pass God's kingdom purposes and his people and all who would receive it by faith. And even those who don't receive it by faith, the word of God still has the power to bring to pass its purpose for the word of God will not return void. And so I just want to celebrate with you that you are even in the midst and in a part of this broadcast and within this audience, because it shows that you within your heart have a desire and a passion and a God-given hunger to see heaven manifest on earth. We're going to celebrate what God has done, and we are going to look forward to what God is about to do. So let's get into it. It's Q1, prophetic release. The first fulfillment that I want to give God glory for deals with the geopolitical influence of the United States and the eastward shift of power. And this was a word that God used me to deliver on February 19th, 2022. You can go and look on my Facebook page and you can see these words that have been released. And I do it purposefully because I want it to be time stamped. I want you to be able to go back and see what God has said and to measure it up against what happens, to give God glory, to question if necessary, to pray and say, God, is this one really from God? How should I respond? And I want you to be able to rejoice and say, like it says in Psalms 118, verse 23, this is the Lord's doing when it comes to pass. And it is marvelous in our sight. So regarding the geopolitical influence of the United States and the eastward shift of power, on February 19th, 2022, the Lord used me to declare that the shift of geopolitical power was headed toward the east. And that countries that were once overlooked and dormant were now about to rise in influence and challenge U.S. supremacy. And that God was going to put his hands on these countries and prosper them in ways that they had not seen before. And it was going to require for the United States to renegotiate its place on the geopolitical landscape. And this has been going on. So to back up the fact that this is being fulfilled before our very eyes on a completely radical level, I wanted to highlight an article and quote an article from The Guardian, okay? And this was released on March 11th, 2024. And here's a quote from that article. It says, an ambitious but anxious China, a confrontational Russia, in that word, I said that there were, there were two countries, China and another major country. The Lord did not release me at that time. In other places that I've spoken, I've been more specific. And I've actually, God has used me to speak <clears throat> in uh, symbolic and allegorical uh, terms, parabolic speech, just like Jesus did, in order to express that China will be working with another major country. I can say now that country is Russia. 
in order to plan a war against the United States. This has been going on since at least 2014. And if you speak to other experts and other prophetic individuals who God has had awakened to this for long before, you'll see that they tried this before, but it did not work. But as early as 2024, this latest effort and endeavor to cooperate, to formulate a plan that would destabilize and destroy ultimately the United States and knock us out of our place of supremacy in the world through military might. This has been going on th since 2020, or, or forgive me, 2014 at least. And so the word spoke about primarily the fact that the United States was going to be having to renegotiate its place, that, the, that our culture was up for grabs, our place in the world uh, 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 scene was up for grabs, and that it was going to require the prayers of the righteous to ensure that we got the right leadership in place and to ensure that we responded properly to the threats that we face internally and externally. And you can go see that for yourself, February 19th, 2022. It spoke about this, among other things. And the quote goes on to say, an ambitious but anxious China, a confrontational Russia, some regional powers such as Iran, and more capable non-state actors are challenging long-standing rules of the international system, as well as U.S. primacy within it. The agencies say in their 2024 annual threat assessment. Hallelujah. The report largely focused on threats from China and Russia, the greatest rivals to the United States. More than two years after Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine, as well as noting the risks of broader conflict related to Israel's campaign against Hamas in Gaza since the uh, 7th of October attacks. Now, we'll talk more about the impact of uh, the Israel-Hamas war um, as we go forward. But I just want to highlight the fact that this word that was spoken on February 19, 2022, is coming to pass before our very eyes. And so we just want to give God glory for that. All right, number two. God used me to release a word on February 10th, 2022, uh, regarding the populist uprising in China for the spread of the gospel. And what God used me to say in that was that there would be a populist, us, a populist uprising, that there would be a movement among the common people of China that would shake up the society, that would catch the attention of the Chinese government and force it to focus uh, domestically on its the, the stability of its culture in a way that it had not had to before. Because let's face it, in those communist countries and under those communist regimes, you don't speak up and protest the way you see people doing over in this country. I mean, look, uh, you can disappear real quick with no recourse or repercussion. And so um, God used me to declare that there would be a populist uprising and that the purpose of this would be for the gospel to spread and go forth. That as the attention of the government uh, turned onto the people and away from its international endeavors, as it strives to uh, uh, assert its dominance in the South China Sea, as it strives to advance its uh, Silk Road initiative and uh, try to formulate uh, new relationships, partnerships, and alliances with uh, 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 countries in the Indo-Pacific and throughout the world so that our prominence can be diminished. This populist uprising shook that up. And what it's doing is it's allowing room for the gospel to go forth. Because what God is trying to do is change the heart of that nation before the time of China's ultimate dominance, which is at the doors. So I'd encourage you to uh, read that word that was delivered February 10th, 2022. Again, you can see it on Facebook. You can go back and you can look at the record of the words that have been spoken through this vessel. And you can gauge the authenticity of this ministry based on these types of fulfillments as one way of verification. There are others, and I've spoken about them in past words that have been released, even on this podcast. But accuracy matters, especially in light of Deuteronomy 18, starting with verse 20, going through 22. Accuracy matters. So this populist uprising took place on um, September 10th, 2022. And here's a quote from an AP News article to back up the validity of this word and to confirm it. 
because it happened, like I said, on September 10th, 2022. This is what the article said. And uh, there's a link uh, to that article with the word that you can find on February 10th, 2022 on my Facebook page. It says, protesters angered by strict antivirus measures called for China's powerful leader to resign. Wow. Y'all, this does not happen in China. Listen to me. An unprecedented rebuke as, listen to that word, unprecedented rebuke as authorities in at least eight cities struggled to suppress demonstrations. Sunday, that represent a rare direct challenge to the ruling Communist Party. I want to highlight that word rare because, see, listen, anybody can say I'm a prophet and they can say something, but all they've done is studied history and they find what happens commonly. And so they can say such and such will happen because it basically happens on a repeating cycle. But I want to highlight this article using these words like rare to show that these things just do not happen commonly. This is an act of God that is bucking against common trends in this culture in order to make room for something that he's doing on a deeper level. Hence, uh, the words that were spoken in that word uh, regarding the gospel going forth. It says, police using pepper spray drove away demonstrators in Shanghai who called for Xi Jinping to step down and an end to one party rule. But hours later, people rallied again in the same spot. Let's look at the persistence, the persistent disruption. Police again broke up the demonstration and a reporter saw protesters under arrest being driven away in a bus. The protests, which began Friday and have spread to cities, including the capital, Beijing, and dozens of university campuses, are the most widespread show of opposition to the ruling party in decades. I want to speak to how uncommon it is once again. If you want to know what happens to people when they protest in China the way that people protest here in a democratic culture, you need to study the Tiananmen Square massacre that took place in Beijing in 1989, where the Communist Party killed, some say between hundreds, others say several thousands of people and injured other thousands who tried to protest in this way against their government because of things at that time like inflation, uh, instabil instability in the economy, particularly with regard to graduates coming out of school. They didn't have the guarantee of jobs. And there was a lot of instability in that culture at that time, as well as political suppression. And so they began to protest and students began to protest and thousands of them were killed. So you can imagine that it would take the spirit of God emboldening the hearts of people who were being oppressed the way that these people in China were being at this time and really are still being, and the, the church is being, of course, uh, persecuted in a very incredible way over there. Please keep them in prayer. But this is why God is trying to spread the gospel to transform the hearts of the masses as this country rises to dominance, because he wants the people to be free, and ultimately he wants to use this country as a tool of good and righteousness throughout the world, rather than having to destroy it for its wickedness. Look here. The other thing that I want to highlight in terms of the word that was spoken through this ministry that came to pass, another fulfillment that we want to glorify God for, was the security breaching incident um, that was fulfilled on July 2nd. The prophetic word came forth on June 24th, 2023. Again, it was fulfilled on July 2nd, 2023. And 24, when a bag of cocaine was found in the White House. And you can find this in various uh, news outlets because I want you to understand something. As I said in the word that was spoken on June 24th, this was done by the hands of the sons of Belial who worshiped our modern day Adonijah. And because this modern day Adonijah, and all you have to do is study the word to understand what God is saying here, because this modern day Adonijah is being exposed in various ways for the wicked character that he possesses and the foolishness of his ways and who he truly is in heart, these deceived 
and deluded individuals are trying to find ways using various mechanisms of, uh, how do you say, infiltration, right? And uh, um, uh, various methods of uh, disruption in order to diminish the public profile of our president. Now, God can put anybody in power that he wants to be in power. We can see in scripture that God has put people of all manner of characters in power. And it's usually based on what the people deserve. Ultimately, God will place in power who the people deserve based on their spiritual habits and their uh, abiding or lack thereof in the word of God and by the commands of God. It also has to do with his purposes, what he is trying to accomplish. And he will put in power who he wants in order to move the switches and levers of power to cause nations to do what he needs to be done for his kingdom purposes. But this, ladies and gentlemen, was a wicked act and an attempt to diminish the public profile of the president. And I assure you that this bag of cocaine was planted. And we just want to thank God that through the prayers of the righteous, it did not reach where it was intended to reach. Because I guarantee you, if they had had their way, this bag would have ended up somewhere where it would have been very difficult for the president himself to deny that he was not using this particular type of drug as a habit. He would have had to spend months, if not years, trying to argue down speculation. But glory be to God, it was handled spiritually so that it could be handled in the natural and that it could be thwarted to the extent that it did not accomplish its purpose so that business could go forward as it needed to. And I would have you to know that you make it, you may say what you want to say about this president, and Lord knows I've got my issues, and I'm not trying to get political and tell you to vote for whoever. But I will say this. I have no allegiance but to God himself. And I'm going to highlight this and give God glory for it. I thank God for the degree to which this president has stood with Israel. Thank you, Jesus. Look at the quote that you find in uh, one of the articles about this situation. At first, they thought that it was uh, uh, found in the visitor's area. They found that it was uh, somewhere else um, on the executive, near the executive entrance, but it was a heavily uh, trafficked area. Anyway, it says here, multiple officials involved in the White House cocaine inquiry now say the bag of powder was found in a cubby near the White House's West Executive Entrance entrance not the formal West Wing lobby, as was previously reported. Investigators expect to be done with the investigation by Monday, said two sources familiar with the investigation. The inquiry had previously been expected to take a couple of weeks. So I just want to highlight the fact that this was fulfilled on July 2nd. And glory be to God, thank God for the intercessions of the righteous. It was not allowed to accomplish its ultimate uh, wicked purposes, uh, because the Lord frustrates the plans of the wicked. Again, we're going over the prophetic words uh, right now that have been fulfilled um, uh, up to this point after what is basically the first quarter of 2024. Okay, so uh, it says here in updating where the cocaine was found, officials said that area was also heavily trafficked. Okay, and again, that word can be found on my Facebook page, uh, it was delivered on June 24th by video, 2023. Check this out. This is the last word that I would like to give God glory for that is being fulfilled right now. Um, I said on September 2nd, 2021, that everything would be different by 2023. So by the end of 2023, the word was that spiritually, God's people would have to be sensitive enough to hear God at another level because the landscape spiritually of our world was going to change and that socially 
economically, geopolitically, nothing would be the same. And that the only way we would be able to accomplish our purpose going forward was to be that church of brotherly love, where unity is at the paramount, where we can, can join together across denominational lines, racial lines, ethnicities, nationalities, states, and, and, and political uh, differences. And we can simply pray the will of God by the spirit of God, being led by the spirit to accomplish as one body what needs to be done. And to hear from God through all of the lies and the deception and the virtual reality that we're having to wade through in order to really see what's going on in our world today and respond accordingly. And what I would have you to know is that ChatGPT AI began to be adopted and integrated by major corporations and AI began to spread like wildfire by the end of 2023. Also, most importantly, the Israel versus Hamas war started, all right? Now, you need, again, look at this word that was delivered on uh, November 20, uh, November 2nd, 2023, where I talked about the Israel-Hamas war. I'm not going to spend too much time on it now, but I want you to go back to November 2nd, 2023. Look on my Facebook page, and I want you to see the word that was written out and see the way that this thing is playing out. And what I want you to understand is that this war between Israel and Hamas is going to prove to be the conflict that pushes the world into a broader global war that had been brewing for years. And the history books will show that it was 2023 that sparked these things where AI began to take off because it was embraced and adopted by major corporations. It was already uh, available in an experimental research style in 2022. But in 2023 is when major corporations began to take it on. Windows took it on. And other corporations began to embrace it and adopt it and incorporate it in their technology so that the masses are now using it, sometimes unwittingly and unknowingly, and increasingly, it's becoming a part of our everyday life, the business, how business is run, and ultimately how ministry is run. And we're going to talk more about what that means and how we should navigate that, how we can leverage that for God's glory, and how we have to be a little bit wary of that, okay? So like, like, like I said, Psalm 118, 23, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So we just thank God for, for, for these uh, words that have been fulfilled within the first quarter of this year. And I want to now go on to prophetic alerts. Number one, listen to what the Lord is saying. There will be one or more explosions. I'm thinking one or two. I saw this where it's going to take place soon that will make national news. OK, you're going to see it across all of the, the airwaves and the major news stations. These explosions are going to take place and they are going to be the work of foreign actors in retaliation for American military movements against their interests. They will constitute acts of war. This is what makes them different from when explosions have taken place for inadvert you know, for um, accidental reasons and even some kind of, uh, you know, domestic terrorist uh, purposes. These are going to be different because these explosions are going to constitute acts of war on our soil by foreign actors in a way that we have not seen in generations. These are gonna be acts of war. Mark my words, these explosions, okay? Number two, and so by the way, whenever this alert is released, whether it's here or you see me uh, release it in written form, whether it's on my uh, uh, YouTube page, uh, the Kingdom Heritage Ministries Facebook page or my personal page, this is a reason to pray. Because unless it is declared that this cannot be changed, the Lord puts it within the power of his intercessors to help bring about a dampening of the blow or a diversion of the act so that it either does not take place or it fizzles before it can fully manifest. Okay. And ultimately, even when it cannot be changed, that where it has to happen it still offers us an opportunity for souls to be saved before they perish when these types of uh, calamities are on the horizon, all right? And then we also wanna pray that those who are in positions to defend our country and who will have to respond um, um, uh, you know, to what takes place, that God would give them wisdom 
and ultimately that the body of Christ would be strengthened and drawn closer to God rather than pushed further away from him, and that it would result in people turning their hearts to the Lord Jesus. All right, prophetic alert number two. The health of our president is a serious issue. Pray that God would sustain him by his mighty right arm in Jesus' name. Pray that God would sustain President Biden by his mighty right arm, by God's mighty right arm in Jesus' name. There is work that God is using this man to do. There's a purpose for him being in office. And so we, the Bible tells us to pray for our leaders. We ought to pray for them, regardless of what you believe about their political positions, regardless of how their policies have impacted you in negative ways, blah, blah, blah. All right. We are citizens of another kingdom. And we understand that it's the will of God that we pray for leaders. So pray for President Biden because his health is a serious issue. This isn't just something that, you know, I've seen on the news and I'm saying, yeah, it kind of looks. No, I'm telling you what God has shown me. It's a serious issue. It's a matter that has less to do with, you know, him looking silly at press conferences and more to do with his life and with the stability of our country. OK. And the repercussions of if anything uh, uh, calamitous would actually happen. So I need you to pray for the health of our president in Jesus name. May the Lord sustain him in Jesus name. And number three, this is a word. OK, this is what I would call the word of the Lord concerning Christian business owners. If you're a Christian business owner, I want you to get out your pen and paper I want you to take note of this word and keep coming back to it. Because, listen, there, there is a window that's opening for you that requires that you, that you consume this word, ingest it, and digest it so that you can manifest it. Listen here. First, this is a season of apostolic industry. It is vital for those who have been called by God to understand that they are not only his children, but also his operatives. And he desires to use his people through business for ministry to be done strategically through that channel, the channel of business. This is the word of the Lord to those who carry God's passion for business. Listen here. If you have dreamed it, if you have a passion for it, and if you have adequate knowledge of it, Go for it. There is an appointed window of time for finances to flow toward those who have been stamped by God for such a time as this. As the economy begins to shift, these chosen vessels will become financial hubs that will ensure that money that is being moved by his divine direction makes it into the proper hands. Therefore, those who are being called, anointed, and raised up in this season to go forth in this work must be prepared to do right with the prosperity they will receive. This explains why many who are on the brink of breakthrough in business have been going through such strong tests of their character. Secondly, we have to be making visionary investments. So this is if you are an investor, you play the stock market, you invest in precious metals, real estate, if you're savvy in these areas or if you are thinking about going into these areas. Not only should we be looking at what's hot now, AI um, um, uh, purveyors like uh, NVIDIA or um, you know Amazon, or, it, uh, listen to me, we have to be making visionary investments, getting in on the ground level so that God can use the elevation of these uh, disruptors to not only prosper us, but also so that his purposes can be financed as he elevates cultures throughout the world who have previously been impoverished, forgotten, and overlooked. Listen here. We have to be making visionary investments. Listen to the Lord's direction. Prophecy doesn't only confirm, okay? It also rebukes, corrects, and it directs, okay? Listen closely. Look east, says the Lord, for the geopolitical power distribution is shifting favorably toward the east. If you're just tuning in, I would encourage you to backtrack after the end of this 
and see the word that came forth uh, earlier. I think it was, um, Lord have mercy. The word that came forth on uh, February 19th, 2022, that's been fulfilled. I want you to look at that as it relates to the geopolitical power dynamic shifting eastward. OK, listen to what God is saying as it relates to investments in that vein. Look here. Many countries have been overlooked, underrepresented or dormant, but will become the birthplace of major economic engines going forward. Thanks to technological breakthroughs, increased education, global need for particular services and the investment of expanding nation states. So as this country grows in its economic power and military influence and geopolitical dominance that once was, say, second place, third place, fourth place, fifth place, it's going to begin looking to these other countries that have been overlooked and it's going to begin investing and looking in places where the American-led global world order just ignored. And it's going to be finding these diamonds in the rough and it's going to re result in economic breakthrough for these countries and it's going to disrupt certain industries. And so we want to get in with visionary investments into these businesses that are going to become prominent in the global economy as it is yet becoming. Listen here. Places like India, the eastern region of China, and some African nations will produce ideas and products that's, that will disrupt long-established industries. Besides these, the Lord will show his kingdom-minded investors, those businesses in the East that are on the cusp of economic explosion in the global economy, as it is yet becoming. Also, be ready when it comes to your investments to get in and get out. Let me explain. Because we are battling against the motives and operations of the Antichrist agenda, we must be sensitive to when a business gets off track and becomes a willful instrument of darkness. In these cases, and let me tell you something, the Lord just showed me, he's going to speak to his people. Those who receive this word by faith, you're going to have dreams and visions. You will know when that country is headed for boom and when it's headed for doom. And the Lord says, in these cases, when it becomes a willful instrument of darkness, in these cases, money should be pulled out and reinvested in worthy causes in Jesus' name. So we're now going to get into the prayer points, okay? There's one primary prayer point aside from the uh, need to intercede with regard to the prophetic alerts that have already been released and however else you've been stirred in your spirit based on these prophetic uh, utterances, the fulfillments, the alerts, and so forth. But there's one major prophetic um, uh, prayer imperative. Listen close. We must have greater involvement in AI technology. When I say we, I mean Christians, followers of Christ, disciples of the Lord Jesus, spirit-filled believers, and those who seek to obey and perform the will of God. We need Christian involvement in AI technology. We have been standing back for the last two years observing it, in awe of it, experimenting with it, and warning about it without realizing that Christians must have a hand in it. We need to be involved in it for three reasons. Listen, we need to have intel from the inside to see what the enemy is trying to do with it so that we can pray and act as a church preemptively. That means we can strike before they do. And in response to the ebbs and flows of this technology. So as things move and change, we need to have those who are on the inside who can say this it's what we need to be praying about. This is where we need to be moving. This is how our evangelism needs to be functioning. This is what we have to be on the lookout for. Okay? Number two, we need to have Christian involvement in AI technology also because we have to utilize this technology to study and analyze the patterns 
of human need and behavior that AI technology brings to the surface. Okay, so the, the, the uh, uh, generative AI technology that we have now, what it does is it is able to, uh, to recall and analyze just incredible amounts of data and records of human thought, okay, and action. And, and, and data concerning the, the, uh, uh, the movements of culture and of individuals medically and socially and politically, even uh, uh, in terms of religion. It can take all of this and it can produce answers based on what has been said. It doesn't make up its own information, okay? And it certainly cannot replace the mouthpieces of God who declare the word of God with a, a fresh anointing. So you don't have to be afraid of it as though it is making up some vision for you. All it can do is regurgitate what others have said, remix it, and it's like what Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. So the imperative is to still be rooted in the word of God. It is still to have an ear that can hear the voice of God so that we can discern truth from lies in Jesus' name. Listen here. This is what's going to happen. Being able to recognize the patterns, all right, by learning how to ask the right questions to this technology, all right, it will allow us to hear the cries of humanity on a broader and more in-depth level. And anybody with a heart for Jesus and for those whom he loves knows how valuable this is because it can help to inform our decisions in terms of missions, in terms of prayer and intercession, in terms of preaching and counseling, right? It can help to inform our ability to minister to the needs of humanity. And number three, with these patterns, the reason we have to be involved in AI is because we want to maximize it as a tool of ministry. Don't be afraid of it. Harness it to the extent that we can right now. Now, there may come a time well, we got to take our hands off. But right now, we can harness this thing for God's glory within this window. Understanding these patterns and being able to see through the lens of massive records of human thought and behavior will allow us to minister more effectively to those in need through the power of Jesus Christ. Now, listen, be warned. Although it can be used for a tool of good at this time in its existence, the ultimate goal of the, en of the enemy for AI is to weaponize it against the righteous. That's the ultimate goal. So again, be vigilant, prayerful, and selective as you interact with this technology. I'll say it again. Be vigilant, prayerful, and selective as you interact with this technology. And you parents who have children who are very tech savvy, some of them will be going to school to study this stuff to learn how to use it, mobilize it for uh, um, uh, business purposes, uh, for charitable purposes, um, for all manner of uh, organizations and things like that. More and more, this is gonna become a major focus of study. And it's gonna be implemented in the way that they you know, learn in the education system, in the, way that they, uh, in the way that teachers teach and all of this stuff, how our society is run. Just pray, pray, because God will cover them, they will co God will cover you. And God will allow the foolish things of this world, world to confound the wise. And what the enemy meant for bad, God will use for good. But we must be prayerful, vigilant, selective as we interact with this technology. Do not become overly dependent upon it. All right? You got to touch grass every now and again. I don't know if you know about that slang term, but we, we still need to begin to harness. And there's others that God are going to be raising up to help to pull people's attention back to some of these uh, uh, how do you say, uh, the old school ways of survival and of, uh, of, of building community and family and using nature, uh, harnessing the beauty and the power uh, and the, pro the produce of nature properly, okay? Farming and homesteading and all that stuff. You can kind of see that movement afoot now. And God is going to have some of his people uh, to, to, to do those kind of things. Study Johnny Appleseed when you get a chance. He was a believer. He was a believer. And you'll find out the way that God puts his hand on certain people to have mastery over nature. OK, um, but I digress. Listen here. Don't become overly dependent upon it. 
all right? Nor should you allow yourself to fall in love with it because it is soon to, to, to be host to and, and producer of an increasing cast of characters which will be released to deceive and mislead the masses away from the true knowledge of God and his son, Jesus Christ. I'll say that again. It is soon to become the producer and host of an increasing cast of character, characters which will be released to deceive and mislead the masses away from the true knowledge of God and his son, Jesus Christ. Okay? So don't become overly dependent upon it. Don't fall in love with it. All right? Or its characters. Because God has already spoken the end from the beginning. Ultimately, the enemy wants to try to use this as a weapon of unrighteousness. But God is able, again, to use what the enemy meant for bad for good. And as for this window of time, this season that we're in, we can harness this. And we can, as, as, uh, um, as uh, the Apostle Paul said, right? All things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. Okay? So there are ways that, yes, you can interact with it. And it's not that it's a sin, but it's it's not profitable for your soul. It's the same thing with social media. You have to be wise. Food for the stomach and the stomach for food. Use it for what you need it for, right? In order to be a witness, in order to build family, in order to be an encouragement to others, all right? But, but don't allow it to take control of you in Jesus' name. Same thing with this AI technology. But fear not, all right? Best part, best part, big finish. Fear not, for this is the word that the Lord has spoken over you to guide, inspire, and assure you in Jesus' name. Listen here, Isaiah 51, 15 through 16. But I am the Lord your God, thank you, Father, who divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. And I have put my words in your mouth. Remember where God takes you is so that he can use you. It's so that he, he, he can manifest himself through your word. And as the word uh, uh, bears fruit in your life, you become a witness, right? So that's why he puts you on that platform. That's why he puts you in that job. That's why he puts you in that school. That's why he puts you in that neighborhood. That's why he puts you in that community. That's why he puts you in that network. That's why. He puts you in that, that ministry, in that church. That's why he puts you in that Bible study. That's why he puts you where you are. That's why he's going to elevate you. That's why he's going to prosper you. That's why he's going to promote you. That's why he's going to heal you. That's why he's going to deliver you. He has the full intention of using the word that he's put in you to operate through you so that he can do this. It says, I have covered you with the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens, lay the foundations of the earth, and say to Zion, you are my people. That is God's word to you. That is God's word that you can speak over your household in Jesus' name. Number one, he is going to divide the sea. The very thing that looks like a dead end, oh, we can't go through it. It's just, it's set up to destroy us. You're going to see that God's going to part the waters so that you can go through to your appointed destiny. He's going to part the waters, going to divide the sea, just like he did for the people of Israel at the leadership of Moses. And so with the staff of Moses, in Jesus' name, I declare, let the seas be parted in Jesus' name. And so he's going to part the sea for your economic breakthrough. He's going to part the sea for your social breakthrough. He's going to part the sea for, the, for the, the breakthrough for your ministry. He's going to part the sea so that he can prosper you and fulfill every promise to your family, regardless of what looks like stands in your way. In Jesus' name, regardless of what the news stations say, he's going to divide the sea. He is that God. And he says, I have covered you with the shadow of my hand. God says he's going to cover you in the midst of the warfare, in the midst of the shifting economy, in the, in the midst of the shifting global uh, political power struggle. God says he is going to cover you with the rise of AI technology. He is going to cover you in business. He is going to cover you uh, in terms of your relationships. Those of you who have dreams and desires of being married, you say, God, I don't even know if I can raise a family in a world like this. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And yes, God still has a mate for you. And yes, it will glorify his name. And yes, he will raise up righteous offspring. And yes, he is preparing you to be who you need to be in that relationship for his glory. 
And yes, you can still believe and cry out to him for it. And yes, he will do it in Jesus' name. Let me tell you something. He is going to cover you, cover your children, cover your household, cover your ministry. You leaders, men and women of God, Hallelujah. Whether you're a minister through music, whether you are a minister through business, whether you are a minister in the in the uh, 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 community arena, the political arena, God said, I will cover you in the name of Jesus. And the word that I've put in you will not return void. The Lord says, I will protect you in Jesus name. If you cry out unto me, I will answer you and show you great, great and mighty things, which you know not. Jeremiah 33, 3. The Lord says, I will cover you and make sure that the seed that I've put in you bears fruit a hundred fold to the max, to the max, to the max in the name of Jesus. This is your inheritance in Jesus name, even in this day and time, even for such a time as this. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. Hallelujah. We glorify your name. We praise you, Lord God. Father, we praise you. We glorify you, Lord, and we thank you so much for what eyes have seen and ears have heard. We thank you, Lord God, that you have chosen to speak to us and chose to reveal yourself to us. We thank you, Lord God, for the words that have been fulfilled. This is your doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. We thank you for the anointing of God that is on our lives that has been poured out. We thank you for bringing us to congregate virtually in this space because we know that distance and time are not a barrier to you. That everybody who is agreeing in faith, Lord God, will receive everything that has been promised. I pray, Father, that you would quicken the hearts of your intercessors and those who don't even know their intercessors. May they begin to dream dreams and experience revelation as they go to your word and begin to see themselves, hallelujah, in their glorified state, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above all. I pray, God, that they would see your glory, that they would be inspired, that they would catch your flame of intercession and begin to pray the words of heaven, releasing them upon earth so that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. I pray, God, that they would hear and heed the prophetic alerts that have been spoken. In Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you would protect our president, that you would guard his health. Lord God, that you would uphold him with your mighty right arm and keep the faith. Father, we pray that you would guard the stability of our nation. We thank you for thwarting the plans of the wicked. And we know that you will put in power who you want to be there, Lord God. And we're going to give you glory every service. Thank you. We thank you for wisdom to know how to handle the times. That you've given us the anointing of the sons of Issachar. To know the times. To know the how to move accordingly. Thank you for training our fingers and how to war. Thank you, Lord, for giving victory as we look forth armored with the armor of God. I speak for protection from the sound of my voice. Thank you. I pray for uh, every single man and woman, every child, to cover them from the assaults of the enemy as they continue to pervert and support their understanding of who you are and who they are. And I pray, God, that you would arise and let your enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That they learn no one will more than you people. Will prosper. I pray you will guard this nation and bring the packs by foreign military to alert the authorities to know it needs to go and need to move in order for protection to take place and for uh, uh, lost lives to be minimized. And I pray God that souls will return to you as this nation begins to experience attacks in Jesus' name. Father, your kingdom come, your will be done no matter what man's plans are. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for participating. I just want you to understand something. Accuracy matters in prophecy, and prophecy matters in God's kingdom. Deuteronomy 18, 20 through 22. Amos 3, 5 through 8. Check down. I'll try to I want you to take that to heart and think you're a part of something. You are part of a move. Continue to abide in God's word and allow his word to abide in you and be led of the spirit of God. Ask his spirit to fill you day by day. 
because as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. God bless you. I leave you in the counsel and care of the Holy Ghost. Like, share, subscribe, and bless. Bye, y'all.